So, a lot of people haven't realised the amount of work that I've done and the amount of people that I speak to. I've got a little list here that uh, the soldiers wrote up for me. So, 1st and 2nd Commando Regiment, Special Forces, the Royal Australian Infantry Corps, the Royal Australian Regiment, the Royal Australian Aviation Corps, the Australian Corps of Transport, the Royal Australian Intel Corps, ASIO, the Australian Federal Police, local police, the courts, Justice Lonergan, the RSLs, the CWAs, people all across Australia, judges, Justice Lonergan, judges up in Cairns that you're completely unaware of because somebody didn't tell you things that you could go and publish. So we have a little bit of a look further through how we have gone out and spoken to Australians, the community. So today we're going to talk about a cretin called Rob Sudi. This man is a traitor. This man knows full well that we are correct, but spends all his time defending the people that oppress you, poison you, lock you down and treat you like shit. The people that dwindled your money supply out of existence. The people that put your homes up to a million dollars plus. The people that caused your food to double in price. The people that caused your fuel to go up by a third. That these are the people that Rob supports because he wholly believes that we can't do what we do. The only reason he believes this is because someone taught him incorrectly. Someone showed him American pseudo-legal law and he got in trouble with it. So he decided he was going to turn on all those people that got him into trouble. But he didn't realise that he was being taught by idiots and therefore followed the word of idiots and became a sovereign citizen himself. It's very, very clear by this SBS article where it says that it took him a year to figure it out. What you figure out, Rob? That you were a slave to a bank? That the United Nations was in operation? What about the Hague, Geneva? Well, what about the Constitution? What about abdication of the throne? What about lowering of the Admiralty Ensign and a takeover by Americans? What about Pine Gap? Do, do any of these things cross your mind while you argue with low-rung people that are playing that American pseudo-legal game because they're not aware of English law or the scripture or have a family that lives in that law? comes from that law. Just because you're unaware, Rob, doesn't mean it's wrong. And that's where you have a problem, because you've been defaming the characters of many, many people over the years. And what I would suggest to all those people on your website is to get together and sue the fuck out of you. Every single person you named should get together and charge you in a courtroom with defamation of character. Because according to the law, Rob, that you know so well, you think it's all right to defame people, but the law says you can still defame people even if you tell the truth. And you've been defaming people for over six, seven years now, holding a website that has a domain name registered back quite so many years ago. Don't think we haven't got the evidence, mate. Don't think we haven't gone through your Facebook. Don't think we haven't gone through all of you because of what you've done. You supported war criminals under the Hague Convention, Rob. That makes you in cahoots with these war criminals. That might make you a war criminal, Rob. It's something you very, very clearly need to comprehend. I don't play American pseudo-law. This is recognised by Justice Lonergan in New South Wales and was uh, recognised by justices in 
cans as well. So I think you have a serious problem in that you keep pushing the people into believing that this is wrong. When in fact, it is more right than you could ever, ever comprehend. All right, here's a fun one. 11.2, complicity and common purpose. One, a person who aids, abets, counsels or procures the commission of an offence by another person is taken to have committed that offence and is punishable accordingly. Two, for the person to be guilty, A, the person's conduct must have in fact aided, abetted, counselled or procured the commission of the offence by the other person and B, the offence must have been committed by the other person. Three, for the person to be guilty, the person must have intended that A, his or her conduct would aid, abet, counsel or procure the commission of any offence including its fault elements of the type the, pers- the other person committed or B, his or her conduct would aid, abet, counsel or procure the commission of an offence and have been reckless about the commission of the offence including its fault elements that the other person in fact committed. 3A, subsection 3 has effect subject to subsection 6. 4. A person cannot be found guilty of aiding, abetting, counselling or procuring the commission of an offence if, before the offence was committed, the person A. Terminated his or her involvement and B. Took all reasonable steps to prevent the commission of the offence. 5. A person may be found guilty of aiding, abetting, counselling or procuring the commission of an offence even if the other person has not been prosecuted or has been not been found guilty. 6. Any special liability provisions that apply to an offence apply also for the purposes of determining whether a person is guilty of that offence because of the operation of subsection 1. 7. If the trier of fact is satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that a person either A. is guilty of a particular offence otherwise than because of the operation of subsection 1 or B. is guilty of that offence because of the operation of subsection 1 but is not able to determine which, the trier of fact may nonetheless find the person guilty of that offence. Now, remember that war criminal David Halpin, Rob? You know, that, that criminal magistrate that failed to do a fair trial under the obligations that are under the rules he's obligated to, those international rules? And would you remember what, what I did with this at all? A soldier brought me this, gave it to me. Why? Would that have something to do with the blessing of Almighty God that is the anchor into that constitution? Would you as a farmhand know anything about it? No, you wouldn't. A soldier of 10 years gave it to me. And you're a farmhand. So you really don't know anything about the blessing of Almighty God that gave this constitution authority in the first place through a kingdom, do you? You, you can't comprehend the finer aspects of the law, can you, Rob? You can't define how that cretin David Halpin ended up on a bench in the first place, let alone being able to uphold all that statutory legislation, you know, those laws of commerce that you push on people because you keep them as wards of the state and refuse to free them into their own e-states like they were before this American power arrived on our soil, like they were before this abdication of the throne, 1936. You don't know much, do you, Rob? All you know is the statutes. All you know is the criminal code. It's not going to get you very far when the argument is your oath, when the argument is a line of authority that gives you a right to hold rule of law in the very, very first place. How do you define that, Rob? You don't know. 
And this becomes a serious problem when you hang out with people like Anne Toomey and she publishes documents like this that clarify exactly what I'm saying. Clarify to a T exactly what I'm saying. You serve foreign powers. You serve a God from afar away. You don't serve your own gods in your Anzac, and this is very clear by the way you desecrate those Anzac and that Anzac flag. It's very clear, Rob. So if you think this is going away anymore, you're sadly mistaken. In the time that I've been quiet, I've been collating all the evidence I need. And you're party to that, Rob. You're a traitor. You defamed the characters of many, many of your countrymen. Your countrymen, while you did the bidding of the state without thinking that the state might be oppressing you with increasing legislation every year, as well as the increasing cost of things, while they financially burden everyone with burdens of warfare issued by the police department in their warfare policing, in their military jurisdiction, under those Hague Conventions, where they had a right under Article 55 Hague for War on Land, but gave up that right when they committed a fucking war crime, Rob. They poisoned everybody. They experimented on everybody. This is a war crime, Rob. You can't excuse yourself from it because you already did it. The act is passed and gone. You committed the act. You can't excuse yourself from the act, Rob. You helped a bunch of people commit war crimes. And your name's on the list as one of those war criminals for helping them, for helping them. You still haven't worked it out yet, have you? You still haven't worked out why I was given one of these, have you? You still like to hang around with your glass ceiling academics that pat you on the back, good little ward of state. You did exactly what we expected from you because you couldn't correlate the scripture, God, the line of authority in your ancestors to your constitution. You believed a foreign power in it. Instead, the United Nations. Golfy clappy to you. You're, you're about as smart as the Aboriginal who tantied always was, always will be, while Albo immigrated more than their entire population into the country. Never was, never will be. And here's a funny little mock it up little cartoon you created with your name on it. You're a manipulator, you're a criminal. You are a criminal. Do you think Australian society should keep putting up with the likes of this? Do you think the Australian community should keep being oppressed by the state while it continues to put them into a trillion dollars debt under Frydenberg? Oh, we're talking about law tarting, aren't we? We just will get out of the fine, don't we, Rob? That's what you thought I was doing? When I came from the council, having discovered what they did to your actual land titles, your land titles, Rob, while you accused me of being a law tardy little American pseudo law guy, I had all that information from the council about what you, your land titles were put under, how they were manipulated, how you were turned into a monopoly board, how you pay that bank to live in your own fucking home. You're dumb, Rob. You're dumb because you hang around the people that manipulate the country. Like Anne Toomey, a glass ceiling academic who proved without a shadow of a doubt, dumbly enough, in one of her videos, I was a thousand percent correct, confirming everything Justice Lonergan put on that courtroom statement. Rob, you haven't rebutted it. You won't publish it because it disagrees with the modus operandi of American pseudo-legal law. No. No. I come from England, Rob. I come from Australia, Rob. Not America. 
those occupiers come from America with their UCC doing all their administration of our assets. Of our assets. And you believe they're the government's assets. And that's where you fucked up, Rob. You support a government to run our assets and keep them away from us. Treating us like debtors and using our assets to enslave us. When they're our assets that got privatised. But you don't address that either, do you, Rob? You think this is all about American pseudo-legal law, which is very demonstrative by your Facebook page. The amount of stupid shit you post on Facebook is amazing. You might as well have dobbed yourself in, Rob, and said, I work for a foreign power and I'm a traitor to my own country. You might as well have signed the paperwork yourself, Rob, and said, take me to court for my war crimes that I openly discuss on Facebook in front of everybody. That's the reality, Rob. You didn't change your ways in all this time. You didn't understand that I wasn't playing American pseudo-legal law having come out of a council. Having come out of a council in a job that is so far skilled above what you could ever do, Rob, riding your horse with your cowboy hat on. 11.2a, Joint Commission. Now, this is a very large offence, so I'm not going to read all of it. Joint Commission, if a, a person and at least one other party enter into an agreement to commit an offence, and b, Either, one, an offence is committed in accordance with the agreement within the meaning of subsection 2, or, two, an offence is committed in the course of carrying out the agreement within the meaning of subsection 3, the person is taken to have committed the joint offence referred to in whichever subsection 2 or 3 applies and is punishable accordingly. Offence committed in accordance with the agreement. Offence committed in the course of carrying out the agreement. Intention to commit an offence. Agreement may be non-verbal. Termination of involvement. It, It keeps going on. So, working with David Halpin to undermine the countrymen of this country on behalf of the United Nations is a joint commission with the New South Wales Magistrates Court. Now, Mr. Freeman Delusion, Mr. Sudi Name, would consider you conspiracy theorists. But at section 11.5 of the Criminal Code 1995, Conspiracy. One, a person who conspires with another person to commit an offence punishable by imprisonment for more than 12 months or by a fine of 200 penalty units or more commits the offence of conspiracy to commit that offence and is punishable as if the offence to that which that conspiracy relates had been committed. For the person to be guilty, the person must have entered into an agreement with one or more other persons, and the person and at least one other party to the agreement must have intended that an offence would be committed pursuant to the agreement, and the person or at least one other party to the agreement must have committed an overt act pursuant to the agreement. You work with David Halpin. David Halpin refused to do things by fair justice, which is a criminal offence, and you helped David Halpin in that crime. You conspired with a magistrate to follow people on social media so that you could undermine their legal arguments. You didn't listen to their legal arguments, just like I witnessed before David Halpin himself when he failed to do what is called fair justice. So Rob Sudi is conspiring with people who commit war crimes in an international jurisdiction while police 
arrest you under a military jurisdiction in wartime policing that Rob Sood is completely ignorant of because it's quite clear in this SBS article that he lost. So you can see that I have talked to so many people and um, the government is actually starting to shit itself because it knows what it's done wrong. It actually knows. It's very evident when Rob comes creeping back into my YouTube and starts making Lortard comments like I'm doing American pseudo-legal law, but it's not. I've spoken to soldiers that brought me pay stick, and that's part of that God thing that comes before the Constitution. And the Governor-General knows this full well. Justice Lonergan knows this. Justice Brereton, who did the Brereton report, knows this. So when you look at all these people that I have interacted with, including the Anglican Church and the bishops, who also know me by title, it's amusing when you consider that this parliament is full of corrupt politicians and the courtrooms are fractured from their line of authority, true, which means that the United Nations has a thumb all over all of these judges and magistrates. And that means that Rob Sudi is in cahoots with the United Nations. That's who he works for. He's helping out the United Nations destroy you and your country. Rob Sudi's complicit in your home being one million dollars. He helps them. So when you look at this across the board, the Anglican Church is fully aware. The judiciary is fully aware. Scott Morrison um, never responded. Christian Porter ran to the Jews who are now having a war in Israel after being called genocidal maniacs under those same laws. Pauline wore a Zionist scarf into the parliament to show her support for Zion. I mean, what more evidence do you want, Rob? You can't con the people forever with your stupid legal arguments. At some point you're going to realise God holds something over all of it in an estate as the father, as the father who defined the line of authority and lineage that you can't argue, you can't even prove. And that's a problem for you, Rob. Now, we can go into a burden of proof. We can go up into a lawful jurisdiction. We can go about defining uh, under section 10 here, uh, if we scroll up, just scrolling up here, um, self-defense, lawful authority, 10.5. A person is not criminally responsible for an offence if the conduct constituting the offence is justified or excused by or under law. Well, I'm reading this criminal code, Rob, and I'm pointing out the crimes that you've committed while under this law, while under this law. So the lawful authority here is the United Nations and this Military Codified Crimes Act called the Criminal Code. The Criminal Code. Military Code. So none of these actions are constituted as being non-criminal, Rob. David Halpin committed an offence going against the Criminal Code. You committed an offence going against the criminal code. The state in which you help committed an offence going against the criminal code. The federal government that you dog lap up to committed an offence under the criminal code. These offences are so serious that they could involve United Nations inspectors, the International Criminal Court of Justice, and the Hague. You are, after all, obligated to follow those Hague conventions. It seems to me, Rob, 
that you are so far out of your league playing American pseudo-legal law that you have no clue about your gods, your lines of authority, a kingdom, and that constitution. You still believe in a crown afar away as defined in the scripture. Now, before we go through this one, Rob, Justice Lonergan is a New South Wales Supreme Court justice that is aware of this law before hearing a case. She is aware of this law when defining the King of Australia. She is aware of this law where she printed my name and date of birth in that document so as not to confuse me with another person of the same name, Rob. Crimes Act 1900, Section 12, New South Wales. Compassing, etc., deposition of the sovereign, overroaring of the parliament. Whosoever within New South Wales or without compasses, imagines, invents, devises, or intends to deprive or depose our most gracious Lady the Queen, her heirs and successors, Rob, heirs and successors in a real line of authority from the style, honour, or royal name of the imperial crown of the United Kingdom or any or of any other of Her Majesty's dominions and countries, or to levy war against Her Majesty, her heirs or successors, within any part of the United Kingdom, or any other of Her Majesty's dominions, in order, by force or constraint, to compel her or them to change her or their measures or counsels, or in order to put any force or constraint upon, or in order to intimidate or overawe both houses or either house of the Parliament of the United Kingdom or the Parliament of New South Wales, or to move or stir any foreigner or stranger with force to invade the United Kingdom or any other of Her Majesty's dominions or countries under the obeisance of Her Majesty her heirs or successors, and expresses, utters, or declares such compassings, imaginations, inventions, devices, or intentions, or any of them, by publishing any printing, or writing, or by open and advised speaking, or by any overt act or deed, shall be liable to imprisonment for 25 years. Now, Rob, does it sound like Justice Lonergan defined something to be a lawful right to assert instead of accusing someone of breaking Section 12 of the Criminal Code or Crimes Act of New South Wales, of which that justice sits? Amazing, isn't it, Rob, that you can't grasp the finer details of the law you push around on everyone. So how about we look at something else quickly? This is fun, Rob, knowing that you're wrong and you can't grasp the finer details of that scripture and how it formed the line of authority into this constitution. So let's have a look at the words of Justice Lonergan quoting from a risk assessment port report of Miss, uh, Miss Prince. 83, fifth. There was nothing in the risk assessment report of Miss Prince which could comprise an assessment result of relevant relevance to terrorist behaviour. Now, I point this out, Rob. We're not a terrorist organisation as defined by the Supreme Court of New South Wales. We are not a terrorist organisation according to the law. We're an organisation called the United Kingdom of Australia, Rob, and I'm going to read from this risk assessment report of fixated persons in New South Wales. The notable difficulties in determining the specifics of Mr Kitzconan's risk are further complicated by the limitations of the assessment. 
having not been afforded the opportunity to involve Mr. Kiskonen in an interview or assessment. Further, whilst the United Kingdom of Australia promotes and adopts the sovereign citizen style beliefs, their overt promotion for violence to achieve sovereignty is not clear. To the knowledge of the author, the United Kingdom of Australia has not been designated as a terrorist organisation. As such, whilst it is evident that Mr. Kiskonen had previously taken a leadership role in the group, whether his behaviour could constitute a serious terrorism offence is directly related to the fundamental intent of the broader group. If the United Kingdom of Australia was to be designated as a terrorist organisation, he would certainly present a threat regarding directing the activities of a terrorist organisation, membership of a terrorist organisation, recruiting for a terrorist organisation, training involving a terrorist organisation, getting funds to, for or from a terrorist organisation, providing support to a terrorist organisation, and then it continues. There is currently no information that suggests that Mr. Mr. Kiskonen is or had previously made any preparation toward undertaking or directing others to undertake an act of violent extremism, politically motivated violence, or terrorism activity. Now, I think the government does most of that, Rob Sudi. However, his statements and promotion of the government officials as war criminals, foreign occupiers, and Australia currently being an occupied country, and therefore rules of war applying, are certainly significant expressions of jurisdiction. Sorry. And therefore, rules of war applying are certainly significant expressions of concern. This is furthered by his making statements regarding holding the police, courts, government to account, using them as an example, through military jurisdiction, military trials, and noting that some public servants deserve to be hanged and their necks snapped. He notes it would bring him pleasure, no, satisfaction. His role as the face of the kingdom has him creating and promoting written documents, recruiting and encouraging others to take the oath, promoting the ideology and the imminence of needing to pick a side in order to be afforded protection. Whilst he is not overtly or publicly calling for violence to overthrow the government, he does create and seek environment and a narrative which would easily be interpreted as a call to arms. Now, let's just just double clarify this, Rob. There was nothing in the risk assessment report of relevance to terrorist behaviour and a total acknowledgement of the United Kingdom of Australia, its sovereign, and someone acting in that sovereign's name under oath. There was nothing in the risk report. At its highest, the conclusion is... 84. At its highest, the conclusions in these paragraphs amount to speculation that the environment or the narrative could change to be interpreted by others as a call to arms. Because, Rob, we know what we're doing. As recognised by Justice Lonergan, it's idiots like you that interpret it differently and therefore are a risk to the community. That's what Justice Lonergan is saying. You misconstruing the facts and getting it wrong and interpreting it in a different way than what it is, is a risk to the community. You are a risk to the community, Rob, for lying to them. So we saw you publish my videos on your couple of Facebook pages, more than one Facebook page, Rob, hidden under all these different names. 
We found them all. Publish away. Please, please publish away. Make everyone aware what Justice Lonergan defined on that Supreme Court record as King of Australia. And go and do it. Push it. Push it out there, Rob. Tell the entire country. The entire country. Because no one's come and challenged me, and they should have. I've seen the feds, I've seen ASIO, I've seen everyone, Rob. Bring it on. Go and push it out there. Because you know what happened in the Bible? Everyone mocked their own foundations until they discovered that they were true. And if you don't want to know that, that's not our problem. So what I want you to realise, Rob, is that Justice Lonergan has detailed the war crimes that were committed against Ewa Kiskonan. They're detailed in this document. Every name that caused harm to this man is named in this document. Every action that they caused going against international law is named in this document, Rob. You don't seem to realise how serious this document is to the United Nations. You, you just lack the skills to even look above that slavery that you push on everyone, you know, that, that commercial law, that, those statutory legislations managed by a parliament when men and women are up and above the constitution with God. You can ignore that Bible all you like, Rob. The, the sheer fact of the matter is this. Your buddy David Halpin is as guilty as the justice that put Dua Kiskonan in jail and put him through the same processes as David Halpin put th me through. That's what you need to realise here. We haven't been playing a game, Rob. We haven't been doing American pseudo-law, Rob. I'm reading from the Criminal Code 1995 which this government created here by codifying the Crimes Act 1914. And you're breaking their rules, the ones they are obligated to as that administering power. So, Rob, now I address the United Nations. Hello, United Nations inspectors. Please come and interview me. They tried to poison me in a forensic mental health unit and failed. And then went and poisoned Jewick Wisconsin. David Halpin did that. Rob Sudi's little buddy did that. Rob Sudi's involved in that, Mr. United Nations Inspectors. So please, I'm here when you're ready to talk, Mr. United Nations Inspector. I'm the one that was in that jail cell when they tried to poison me. I'm the one that you came to inspect, right? Maybe we should talk very, very seriously about these war criminals that we're discussing. So, Rob, I'm not here to argue with you. This is the bottom line, really, isn't it? You're on the back foot now. I'm here for the United Nations inspectors to tell them all about you, to tell them all about what you've done. To your own countrymen. I'm here to tell them all about David Halpin and all about what he did. So be fully aware that we want those United Nations inspectors to come back and fly in. We want to sit down with them. Me and my men want to sit down with the United Nations and explain very clearly what we've discovered and put on the courtroom record. And we want to point the finger at all those criminals like you, Rob. So we're waiting for the United Nations to return. So last thing before we go, all of you on that website need to put your differences aside and come together in a defamation lawsuit against Rob Sudi. Against Rob Sudi.
He's the one defaming all your characters, treating you like idiots for challenging a United Nations-run administration in your own country. So I would suggest you all gather together and put aside your differences and go into a court case together against someone that has defamed your characters very, very badly. So I want you to know, Rob, you are not prepared for what I can put on the table. I can tell you that straight out. You, you can play your criminal code all you like. There are higher things at play. Justice Blonican defined it at the highest, at the highest. This means the crown. This means God. This is something you refuse to comprehend. This is something you deny. You won't even look at the scripture to define where your forefathers got their authority from. So you lose. You sit there on Facebook so, like some little hero, hiding in the bush with your farm, right? You don't even help the country. The country beat you down and you submitted. You didn't even think about what the entire picture was, selling your land out from under your feet and putting you and your Commonwealth into a trillions of dollars of debt on purpose to undermine and pull the rug out from underneath your feet. What the hell do you think I did when I came out of that council 15 years ago? I wasn't a bogan. I worked in an IT department running 27 servers for a council, Rob, while you rode a horse around with your cowboy hat on. So I think I would know, hands down, much more than you could ever fathom in your tiny little brain. In your tiny little brain. You are so swept up on this American pseudo-legal garbage consumed by it rob because it bit your ass and you failed you failed don't blame us for your failures after a year i realized that i was going nowhere because i was totally incompetent my name's rob sudi in the sbs paper rob that's the hilarious part. That's the totally hilarious part, Rob. You gave up because your brain couldn't fathom the lineage that your ANSAC sealed down in international law. You couldn't fathom the flag your ANSAC died under, died under, died under. You couldn't fathom that. You couldn't fathom abdication of a throne. You couldn't fathom a foreign United Nations driven administrator under Hague conventions. You, you couldn't fathom these things, Rob. You went straight down the American pseudo-legal garbage that keeps circulating around Facebook because it comes out of the fixated persons unit in New South Wales. It's their ideology, Rob. Matthew Reason of the fixated persons unit was caught out on the Supreme Court record talking his ideologies. They're not our ideologies, Rob. American pseudo-legal garbage is pushed by the police so that people fall into that trap so the police can arrest them. That's surely a crime, Rob, setting people up for a failure. And when it's a fixated persons that got caught out doing it in cahoots with them, are you? Uh, are you? Because this is serious, Rob. This is not a fine. This is a war crime we're talking about. There's something so far above your aptitude and your brain level. It's just startling to see you continue you haven't grown up you haven't grown in any way shape or form you're stuck in that hamster wheel 
I guess you love it, arguing with idiots all day instead of defending your country and standing up and putting the wealth back in your country and seeing administrators liable for their actions in administrative fraud and criminal action. I thought you would have stood up for what your country was so that it didn't fall to the wayside and be given away to banks who are now going to run Aboriginal land and mine the shit out of it and mine the shit out of it. Because I think this country doesn't have a brain, Rob. You're about the sum brain of the country. Dumb as fuck. Literally dumb as fuck when it comes to international law and the standing of this country in that international community with wealth, commodities, production, investments, and all the rest of it. I just think you're just incapable of seeing that stuff. So you whine and harp on that everyone's an American pseudo-legal crapper because that's all you can see. And you failed at it miserably because even the SBS reported your failure, whereas the Daily Telegraph called me a king of Queensland, right? Whereas the Mirror called me a king of Queensland, whereas the Sydney Morning Herald called me a king of Australia, whereas Justice Lonergan called me the king of Australia. Might have something to do with all of that law that you failed to grasp Rob, totally failed to grasp. Well, I have soldiers around me looking at it going, wow, that's who we are. That makes us whole. We no longer fight for an administration, is that's who we are. And that becomes a problem when I pointed out what Jackie spoke in the fact that this government can't even raise a defence force while it gives you land to the Aborigines. Why isn't it asking the Aborigines to defend their own land? Why aren't they creating a defence force instead of relying on us to defend them after they stole everything from us? And work for a fucking thing, Rob. You think that's normal? You think that's okay? Well, it's not. Because the people doing it are war criminals. And you're in cahoots with those war criminals.
Why would you join that evil? Why would you even promote it? Why would you support it? Why would you conspire with it? When you can see what they did to us.